Hello everyone, welcome to 3dDesignAcademy.com. In this lesson, we will learn about continuity. Now, if you've used uh, alias at least a little bit, you'll probably be familiar with the terms such as position, tangent, curvature, and also G0, G1, G2, and G3. And you'll probably wondering, well, what the heck is all these terms mean? So in this lesson, I'm going to try to explain at least a little bit about what they are. Okay, so in order to, well, I guess the best way to demonstrate this is to surfaces. So let's go ahead and put some transition surfaces here. Now, continue usually refers to how the transition uh, transition are happening between surfaces. So and to explain this a little bit more visually, I'm going to put a surface filler on. So I'm going to start with chord uh, for the construction type. I'm going to say start with chord. I'm going to start with G0. And for the chord length, I think I'm going to probably make it a little bit big so that it's easier to see. Flow control, I'm going to just set it edge align. And I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to start with G0 over here. And this one is going to be tangent. This one is going to be curvature, and this one is going to be G3. And of course, there is, well, actually, um, I think, well, there is something called, well, I don't know if it's called anything, but there is a position failure right here. So there's a little bit of a gap. So if I just put the curvature comb on them, actually, uh, let's see, I'm going to put the curvature comb here. I'm going to put one here. Over here like this. Actually, I wonder if these have lead-ins in them. I'm going to try. Okay, so I'm going to just turn this all into form factor one so that it's a little bit easier to compare. Okay. So these are the basic continuities in alias. So we got no continuity because it is, well, there is no transition. Yes, yeah, so there's a, uh, well, it looks like it's touching, but there's actually a gap. So there's no transition and there's G0, which is position. So it is touching, but it is a mechanical, very hard transition. There's no smoothness to it. And there is something called a G. Uh, G1 or tangent. So it's got continuity, but if you look at this, uh, you'll be able to sort of, I guess, um, see that the transition is a little bit abrupt. And there's G2, which is all, now we start to get into very smooth or transition. But it is, uh, if you look at the curvature column, you'll notice that it's a little bit abrupt. And now there is something called G3. Uh, G3, after G2, everything, I, I believe everything is called curvature. It's just a matter of is a G2 curvature or a G3 curvature. Now, uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to try to demonstrate how this is all different. So with position, there is no continuity. So I'm just going to put a curvature comb here and I'll just check G2 continuity, that's fine. And I'm gonna turn show comb and auto scale on like this. Okay, so with the no continuity, there's, well, basically there is no continuity. There's a gap, as you can see over here, there's a gap of about two mils, so, so there is no continuity. Now, when we move on to position, if I just check the continuity on for G0, you'll see that it's achieving position, but basically it's a harder transition. You know, there's a hard edge and uh, the, as you can see over the curvature comb, yes, uh, there is no continuity. Now, with tangent, you now start to see a smoother transition between the surfaces. Now, if you look at the surface, oh, actually, let me just turn all of these off and I'm going to just duplicate the curve so that you guys can sort of see how it is structured. So if you look at the CV, uh, CV structure over here with the tangent, uh, the CV, the transitioning surface has to be exactly lined up with the uh, CVs of the main primary surface. So if you look at this right here, you'll see that they're all exactly in a line. That's what defines tangency. This is where we start to get a smooth surface. But if I, let's see, I'm going to turn highlight on. 
the only problem is though with tangency you'll probably never see tangency in nature and as you can see over here uh, if you look at the highlight over here yes it is smooth but it is also got a kink within the uh, highlight over here so if, if i turn zoom around you'll notice that there's a little kink Yes, the transition is relatively, I guess, smooth enough, but as you can see, it's, well, it's not perfect. And that's where G2 comes in. This is where it starts to get really smooth and you get a, tra a nice transition. As you can see, uh, the highlight line over here, uh, you'll see that it's a very smooth, that there's no kink like the G1 tangency. And if I just duplicate the curves, and I'm just going to bring it up over here. And I'm going to turn the curvature comb on. Now, unlike tangency, actually, let me see if I can do a comparison. Okay, so maybe this is better. Okay, so I'm just going to delete the curves and I'm going to... Put the curvature comb on here, like this. Oh, maybe I'll just make it a little bit bigger. Now, with the curvature comb, you'll notice that the, there's a little bit of height difference, but it is still achieve. Uh, well, basically, the curvature combs are, um, I guess, positional. I guess I don't know how you else you would put it. But uh, as you can see over here, the co the combs are touching, but there is a height difference. With G2 curvature, you'll notice that the comb is uh, at the same height not only is it touching but it is at the same height and if you look at the structure with tangency oh well actually let me go back a little bit with tangency you actually need only three cvs in order to well degree three surface not three cvs degree three surface in order to achieve tangency so right now even though it is it's got five uh it's a degree five if i do an explicit control you will see that I can still achieve a tangency with a degree three surface over here. And let me just turn the surface continuity on and I'm going to say tangency like this and we are able to achieve a smooth surface. With curvature, however, you need at least a five degrees. Now, this is only for surfaces that are transitional. So if you have a, let's say a filler like this, you need three rows of CVs in order to achieve curvature to this surface, and you need three rows of CVs, one um, position, tangent, curvature, in order to transition to this primary surface over here on the other side. Now, if you only had one side, you only need a degree three. But usually, when we're talking about continuity, because uh, we are talking about continuity between two surfaces, usually five degree is <coughs> sort of the set standard for minimum of degrees you need in order to achieve the set continuity. So with this one, I'm gonna just turn the curvature on or the continuity on, and you'll see that we are able to achieve curvature. Now, let me just duplicate the curves like this. Now with this one, what you need is three CVs. So if the first one, uh, first CV you need for curvature, uh, for position, the second CV you need for tangency, and you'll see that they're in an exact same line. With curvature on the other hand, you do need one more row in order to achieve curvature, but it is not exactly on the same line. It is also dependent upon the structure of this CV, uh, CV over here. And let me just demonstrate to you guys. So I'm just going to turn curvature on over here. Now, in order to just tend, uh, well, the curvature line is always going to be affected by this, but let's say I would just move this one. You'll notice that the curvatures uh, or the third row CV is also shifting. So it's not exactly a straight line. It is uh, dependent upon the, uh, the main slab or the primary surface. So this is something that you need to be aware of. Now, this is curvature and there is something called G3 curvature. So I'm going to try and see if I can turn the highlight on and I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to see. Okay, so there is 
actually very little difference between G2 curvature and G3 curvature. However, if you're doing class A modeling, you want to make sure that you want to do a G3 curvature, especially if you're doing a transitional surface between a large, uh, large surface, uh, such as, let's say, the body side and the rear. There is always that corner. Or let's say you are trying to make a roof and a windshield and there's a transitional surface between those two surfaces. You want to make sure that those, at least the bigger uh, bigger slabs, uh, have a G3 continuity. And the reason why is because G3 it requires a little bit more smoother transition. So I'm going to see if I can make this even more dramatic by increasing uh, or I guess reducing the form factor. Now, if you see over here, with the G2 continuity, I'm going to see maybe zebra stripe. Okay, so I think that might be better. With the zebra stripe, you'll see that there's a transition, but it's a little bit more abrupt relatively. But if you look at G3 curvature, it's super smooth. As you can see, the transition over here, I think you can probably see it over here. I think this is also has to do with the visual, I think the tessellation. But even with tessellation, um, with, even with considering tessellation, the G3 is going to give you a much smoother highlight. Now, if I were to show you guys with a curve curvature, it might be a little bit easier to see. So if you see over here, and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit, now with the G2 curvature, you will see that the combs are touching and they're at the same height and it is transitioning somewhat smoothly. But with G3, it is absolutely perfectly smooth. So if you see over here, it is the same height, but with the G2, there's a little bit of kink, I guess. But with the G3 curvature, even with the curvature comb, um, the only well, even with the curvature comb, it is a very, uh, it's got a very smooth and nice transition. Now, the only way, I think the only way that you can evaluate whether it's a G3 continuity is with the curvature comb, because with the surface continuity tool, the only, you can only go up to G2. And I think it is more, the, uh, more of a mathematical calculation. But I think G2 is uh, probably the only way that uh, G2 is probably the maximum that you can mathematically calculate it. G3, I think it's now it gets more into an art, you know, uh, where you can only measure with the curvature comb. And it's basically a evaluation of how smooth the uh, tra uh, trans uh, transitions are uh, visually. Okay, so uh, that is continuity within alias. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.